All right, guys, while I have the opportunity, I wanted to do a quick video about uh, the three types of DSM ECUs, um, which ones you want and uh, how you tell them apart. So I'll start with the most common type and the least desirable. Um, that would be the non-EEPROM. Now, a lot of people will go off of part numbers for these. Uh, I would not because there are so many part numbers and variations of part numbers and rebuild ECUs that have different cases than their boards. So you really don't want to go off of that. You have to go off of what the board is, but if you just want a quick indication of what it might be, um, this is how you would know it's not an EEPROM. Because um, it's just a part number and there's no little E on the right corner. Uh, EEPROMs usually have an E down where this T is right here. But um, like I said, that's not foolproof, so don't go off of that 100%. Um, there's no outside indicator of it otherwise, but um, I'll crack the case open and then you can we can point out some things to check for. All right, so we got the case off, and um, this is what the inside of a non-EEPROM looks like. Now, the biggest thing you're gonna look for in one of these is you wanna look, and I'll turn it this way because it's easier to be consistent that way. So with the plugs at the top, you want to look in the lower right corner and you'll notice on this one there's nothing here it's just you know traces and a little tiny chip you're looking for a big you know dual inline chip right here which you'll will be obvious in the next one we look at um, but that if there's no big chip right there then it's not an EEPROM um, these work and um, ECM link used to offer a conversion to these so you could convert them into an EEPROM you know to be able to tune them but um, as of right now they do not offer that and I don't believe they had an ETI on when they would offer it so for now these aren't really useful for you but I mean they work um, just you know stock car it, it'll work fine so um, we'll go to the next one that you would want which is an EEPROM Oh, one more thing I forgot about this ECU. Um, they generally come in anything from uh, 96 to uh, late 97 cars, um, at least stock. I mean, obviously anybody could have swapped anything into anything, but, you know, stock cars, these will be the middle ones. And this one is um, an EEPROM ECU, which is the most desirable one. Um, they generally came in 95s, like stock. So if you're looking at a stock car, you know, you know, one that you know is never been messed with, 95s will have the best chance of having these in them. Um, the general um, way you would tell is it has the E right there in the lower right. Now you do not want to confuse this E over here because non-EEPROMs also have that E and they also have it on this label right here too. So see this has an E but that doesn't mean anything. And um, like I said, there's a few different part numbers of these. You really don't want to go off of that just because of how old this stuff is. You know, anything could be in anything, and you could pay for something that has the E you think it is, and it actually has a non EEPROM board in it because they fit. So uh, let's get the case off and we'll check it out inside so you can tell the difference. And as you'll see with this ECU here, this is quite a bit different from the other one. So you'll see it has this big red chip right here. This means it has ECM link. Now, it doesn't say whether it's full or light, but I know for a fact this one is light. Um, it just has some um, cut down functionality. I don't believe it can run speed density and some other things. Um, that's not a big deal for this. I mean, and you can always send it out to have it, um, they give you a code and you can upgrade this. Um, I can't remember how much it is, but it isn't too bad. <coughs> now, <clears throat> Now another thing to keep in mind too is um, if you have an EEPROM with a stock chip still, this down here will just be a black chip this size. Um, it, usually uh, the OEM one is soldered directly to the board. So you can also see one where it is a socket, so it'll be, you know, like this, and there'll still be an OEM chip in it, which means that you can put ECM link if you just order it and then you can plug it straight in like this. Or also um, ECM link V2 or DSM link as they called it then 
would have a similar two stock chip, you know, that would be in a socket, but usually the V2 chips are plain or they have a little sticker that just says DSM link and a white like little label. Um, the stock ones have like a silver like Mitsubishi label if I recall kind of you know they look similar to this um, But yeah, if you get v2 Keep in mind that you cannot get the v2 cable any longer So if it didn't come with the cable you're kind of stuck unless somebody will give it to you um, I don't know if they still upgrade v2 to v3 But even if they did um, You need to send the cable. They don't care about the chip if you don't have the cable, you don't have ECM link for V2. V3, it is the chip, and you can buy replacement cables for $50. Um, another thing to check when you're, you have an ECU apart is look at the capacitors. Um, they're these guys right here, so we'll zoom in on one. Now, as you can see, these are all brand new, so they look good. But what you want to look for is any bulging. So, like, if um, this top is bulging out or you look around the bottom and you see brown um, that means they're leaking and you need to replace them because they'll damage the board um, another thing like if you look at this one over here it's got a little uh, T on it and what that actually is is it's a place for pressure to go so instead of this thing exploding it actually just pops right there and vents out any uh, pressure that would be in there um, like I said this one has already been recapped um, so it, it's good to go, but just check that out when you're looking at anything and also, you know, look for anything burnt Like, you know, these little drivers here can get burnt um, these MOSFETs can get burnt back here um, Just keep an eye on it And now we're on to the third type of ECU that you'll find which is completely different than the other two and this is the black box um, Now the black box is very similar to an EVO ECU um, but it just has some like, you know, differences that make it so they're not directly compatible but um, these are actually a little more desirable and they came in the basically 98 and 99 cars um, I would say in terms of uh, what do you want for your car if you you know just getting started out you want to learn how to tune you want to go for ECM link just because it's a much more user-friendly interface this is more like turning tuning an Evo so you would need a uh, Tactrix cable, um, Evo scan, and ECU flash, and those are programs to read and write to the ROM. So, you know, read your file, log, read your files, and to write to the ECU with ECU flash. Um, they're good computers, and um, they're just a little more difficult to use because of that. Um, to use them with um, Evo scan, you want to use a ROM called uh, SETI Mods. Um, that's essentially a port of an EVO tunable ROM to this ECU. Uh, it hasn't been maintained in a really long time, so you, it won't be as good as an EVO ROM, you know, like a modern EVO ROM, but it'll still work. Um, it's just a pretty steep learning curve in comparison to ECM Link. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you're gonna swap this into an earlier car, you know, a not 98 or 99, there's a little, um, Pull extra port next to the OBD that you need to do that, you know, without any extra wiring or anything. Um, that's the only way that it works, you know, with that. Um, you the Tactrix cable will come with a little um, piece to plug into that, and that's what allows you to write to the ECU. Now, on an uh, earlier car, you can still run it. You just need to uh, put a pin in that plug that that hole on the. ECU harness and then you can run like a it's like a little headphone jack end so it's just a mono headphone jack you wire it you're essentially just grounding a wire if I recall um, but that's how you would do it on an earlier car this is a 97 this particular car so my original plan was to use this ECU in this car but I had to get a pin from somewhere and I just never got to it and uh, ECM link came up so it worked out better for me